Alright, so today we're going to discuss about the uh, 2016. I think this is uh, Nagri Samiran paper, try paper. I got this paper online. Yeah, some students actually share, share this paper to me and then they find this paper is very hard. So today we'll discuss about this paper. Yeah, so, okay, let's start about the first one. Okay, diagram one show the graph function. Okay, graph function, whenever you see the graph functions, any graph function with the modulus thing, if modulus thing, whatever equation here, you have ax plus b, if x is power one, if x power is one, you always will get v, v shape of graph, all right? If, f, if x power is two, you will get the graph will look like a w. The graph actually will look like this. Okay, this, this is some extra knowledge. Okay, anyways, let's come back to this question. So we have this equation. We have this equation, which is fx equals to 3x plus 2p. All right, and then this is just a range. This range actually tells us it's actually from 0 to 6. Okay, nothing very special there. So first thing is ask you to state the values of p. Whenever you see the state, you can straight away write the answer. So in order to find uh, the values of p, I guess you just need to substitute the coordinate into it. Yeah, you can do any coordinates. Okay, so if I want to find the value of p, I can maybe I use this coordinate. This coordinate is called what? 0, 5. If 0, 5, that means x is 0, fx is 5. So this is 0 plus p. So basically, p you will get 5. I mean, yeah, actually p can be positive, negative 5, but I, I guess here actually they want 5. Okay, so do you understand why actually I get 5? Should be okay, right? So basically, you just substitute 0 into here. Or you can use, let's say you do not want to use 0, 5, you want to use this coordinate. Let's, say, let's see where we get the same answer or not. 13 equals to modulus 3, 6 plus p. So this is 13 equals to modulus 18 plus p. Okay. Okay, actually modulus, when you move the modulus to the other side, you'll get positive negative 13. You'll get 18 plus P. Yeah, this is the correct way. But then over here, the values do not have S, so I guess you only have one answer. Yeah, so this one, suppose if I move the modulus to the other side, I will get, I will get actually positive negative 5. This is the correct one. So let's say the P, let's say I move the 18 to the other side, I will get P equals to 18 minus 13, which p I will get 5, and then or I will get p equals to uh, negative 13, uh, negative 13, I, I mean, eight. oh sorry, I mean this is 13 minus 18, I will get negative 5, or negative 13, or po yeah, negative 18 minus 18, negative 13 minus 18, isn't it? Yeah, positive 13 minus 18, negative 5. Or this one, you will get negative 31. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just different coordinate. Maybe because of this zero, you will actually have you get one of the answer only. So I think if the question asks you to state the value, yeah, you, you can you, you can write p equals to 5 or p equals to negative 5. Then I think it should be... If negative 5 will be very standard because both also actually getting negative 5. But only one mark. Let me think any faster way to doing this. I don't think you need... If only one mark, maybe you do not need to sub this coordinate into here. I think... I think this is what, from my knowledge. I think this one, you assume fx equals to y. This is something like y equals to 3x plus p. Okay, just ignore about modulus. Okay, ignore about modulus. We know y equals to mx plus c. So p basically is a c. So p actually is a c. Over here, you can understand basically c is a y-intercept, right? So in this case, your y-intercept is 5, so you just write p equals to 5. Suppose this straight line, it will continue at cut at negative 5. But in this case, you write p is 5 and negative 5, I think both is correct. Yeah, just do like this. Just ignore about this coordinate. 
I, I mean if one to five P because just one mark, you don't need to do so much working. You should be able to straight away write the answer. And then it'll ask you to find the range. Range is very easy. Range actually the the means the means for the y axis. Okay, like domain we say is from one to six. This is range. From means the graph is basically from zero until the maximum here. The maximum is thirteen, right? So the range itself, I would say f x or I say f, is from zero to thirteen. This is how how we do range. Range is actually means for the the y axis, the value on the y axis. Alright, so far so good. If anything you want to ask, just type on the comment. Because actually both actually are using two different screens. Yeah. So okay, let's continue to the question number two. Okay. Give, given that the function fx equals to huh, number one is just like this, two mark. Okay. Okay. For number 2 here, given that the function fx and gx, find f inverse, so you will need to do inverse for f. So in order to do inverse for f, when you have the fraction like this, it, yeah, it's a bit complica complicated. So what we do is I will let fx equals to y, then I move my f to the other side, x equals to f inverse y. I mean, yeah, I should have write f inverse y. So since fx equals to y, I can say y equals to 5x plus 3 over x minus 1. Alright, then in order to find f inverse, that means I must make x as a subject in this equation. So my objective is to make x as a subject, mean x equals to something. Alright, so okay, so what I will do over here is I'm I will multiply the x plus 1 to the other side. Okay, so I will have y xy maybe xy minus y equals to 5x plus 3 since i want to make x the subject whatever have x i will group them together so i have xy minus 5x equals to y plus 3 then i will factorize out my x y minus 5 equals to y plus 3 so therefore my x is equals to y plus 3 over y minus 5 because they are multiplying move to the other side is actually divide and then you, you, you have your x, isn't it? Your x basically equals to f inverse y. So f inverse y equals to y plus 3 over y minus 5. Then from here, I can know my f inverse easily. So my f inverse x is basically equals to x plus 3 over x minus 5. Yes, this is how we do it. Yeah, see. Okay, so, so far so good. Do you have anything you want to ask me? Okay, about B, 1B. So <laughs> let's move back to the 1B. Okay, let's, since the student cannot understand 1B, I'm going to uh, discuss again what is the meanings of range. Okay, so I give you a simple example. This is X, this is Y. So let's say, I have a line look like this. I say this coordinate is basically 10, 50. Okay, this is just a co co coordinates. Okay, so if the question asks you about domain, domain of, of this, this equation. So domain basically means the graph, uh, I mean the, the graph in the, in the Cartesian plan or the graph in the, this diagram over here is actually from from where from 0 to 10 isn't it so i will say because this is 10 this this is 50 isn't it so the okay so the domain is basically is from 0 to 10 but if the question asks about range range is for the y axis of course in this case you must know what is this value are. so let's say i call this value is is 15 so your range is, is the graph on the y-axis. I mean, the line, we actually pay attention on the line here. So the line here is actually from 15 to 50, isn't it? So the range, I will say the y is from the 15 to 50. That's all. This is how we understand the range and the domain. 
So if let's say I change this this thing a bit, I say this is eight. So the range basically is from the eight to fifty. So this one will become eight to fifty because this is this is the graph of the this is a y is is actually we call it range. Uh, actually this one will be the range of the straight line. And then this one will be the domain of the straight line. So here is actually is the domain of the straight line, and this one will be the range of the straight line. So in this case, because the graph is not from 5 to 13, isn't it? The graph actually is from the 0 to 13. So the range is from 0 to 13. That's all. Can you actually understand it? I, I mean for Tasha, before I move on to question number 2B. Yes, good. Yeah, this is how we do range and domain. And for the 2A, should be okay, right? Any one of you have problem in 2A? No, right? Okay, if you don't have, then we actually we will, we will move on. Okay, to 2B. 2B, basically, you just substitute G into the F inverse. So we have the F inverse over here. So when I say F inverse G, means what? Now your X itself will change to G. So that means whatever things you have of x over here will become g. Okay, plus 3 minus 5. Of course, in the exam, this is not the way you write. So since you know this is g, so what I will do is I will substitute the gx into the position here. So I will say this is 2x plus 7 plus 3 over 2x plus 7 minus 5. 2x plus 7 because g is 2x plus 7 isn't it minus 5 so therefore my final answer should be 2x plus 10 over 2x plus 2 done okay it's quite simple and it's two two mark two mark i, I guess so far so good for for 2b this is just a normal function question yeah okay good then we go to number three Given that the straight line y equals to 2x plus q is tangent to the curve. Whenever you say tangent to the curve, b squared minus 4ac equals to 0. Okay, tangent means actually the curve and the straight line, they touch at one point. So only touch one point is equal to 0, right? If touch two points, will be bigger than 0. If touch no point, will be less than 0. Okay, this one you should already remember this because you just like 60 days to your SVM exam. I hope you remember this. So before we do B squared minus 4AC, you have to make sure you substitute Y into the Y. So therefore, I will say 2X plus Q equals to PX squared plus 6X plus 3. I just substitute Y into the Y. Then I will make it equal to 0 because this is how we get A, B, and C. So PX squared, 2X move to this side is minus 2X, so I get 4X. Then I will get 3 minus Q. So over here, you should know how to get your A, B, C. So your A will be P. Your B will be 4. And your C will be those things do not have X. Then we substitute into here. So B square is 4 square minus 4 A, C. 3 minus Q equals 0. So this is 16. And then this is negative 4 P multiplies 12, uh, 3 is negative 12 P. And then this one will be positive 4PQ. I hope my math is okay. Then the question asks you P in terms of Q. So that means I will need to make P as a subject. So over here, I will, I will rearrange a bit. So, okay. So I will, okay. Let me move P to the other side. Lah. I just love to do like this. Minus 4PQ. Then I factorize out the P. This one will become... Uh, will become okay 12 minus 4q equals to 16 so basically p equals to 16 over 12 minus 4q and i find ev everything can divide 4 right so so what i will do i will divide 4 here i will divide 4 here yeah i just simplify the equation so it's basically 4 and then it's 3 minus q okay so far so good this is how we find p in term of q Okay, so if no problem, then I'm going to move on to... Okay, this three mark is just easy. Okay, number four. The quadratic equation, you have the quadratic equations like this and like this. You have two quadratic equations, you have the same root. 
find the values of p. Okay, same root. I guess this is something like alpha plus beta equals the sum of root. And you have product of root equals to alpha, beta. But it's just too much. It's just too much. Okay, let me just teach you some easier way. Of course, you can use this one, but then it will be take some time. It will take some time. So root, first thing you have to understand, root means answer of x, isn't it? I say many times. So I have I see this equation do not have any unknown. So I will actually try to get the answer of x from this equation. Equal zero. No, this equation there's something. You know, this equation actually will give me some decimal because no matter how I factorize, I cannot get thirteen. I hope this question have nothing wrong. Okay, then this two mark is not so called the uh, easier two mark. Okay, so yeah, so we will use this formula lah. x squared minus sum of root x plus product of root. Okay, equal to zero. So from here, in order to use this equation, I say many times you must make sure your x square is uh, the number in front of x square is positive one. So here you see four here, isn't it? So I will divide four for the whole equation. So actually it's x squared minus p plus 5 over 4 x. I mean the whole thing is x minus 2 equals 0. I, div I divide 4 for, 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 uh, for the whole equation. So from here, I know this is my product of root. That means equals to p plus 5 over 4. That means alpha plus beta equals to p plus 5 over 4. And then from this equation, I mean this one, I will actually make the positive become both negative. x minus 2 equals 0. So this is my product of root also, right? My product of root equals to negative 13. Since both also product of roots, because the question say they have the same product of root, they say they have same root. So definitely I can say this one equals to this one because they are the same. So I will say p plus 5 over 4 equals to negative 13. So p plus 5 equals to negative 52. So p equals to negative 57. I hope my answer is correct. Do I need to find p? Yeah, actually I need to find p. Yep. My answer is correct. Very much correct. Yeah, because I'm checking the marking scheme as well. So far so good. Can I understand or not? Let me go... Okay, just give me one minute, I'll go and take something. Yeah, the, the icon is just too cold for me. Okay, so far you can understand this one, then I will move on to number five. Okay, so whenever I see a lot of like dolphin thing, I guess I I guess this one is a, actually is a KBAT question. Okay, diagram five show the movement of the fish jumping jumping out from the surface of the water. The movement of the fish start at a point O and then reach H which is the maximum so maximum when I see higher sometimes I link to my uh, something linked to my mind is dy dx equals 0 H and N with the Q so basically you will see a quadratic equation and then given that the movement of the fish represents by the function so actually this is how the fish jump and then the scientists actually find out an equation for the fish jump and the point H is 75 meter from the uh, from the surface of the water. Alright, so yeah, at least you have some information. Okay, then he asks you to find the P. Okay, so from here, this equation, this equation right now, at least you have to understand this one is the completing the square equation. Because how the completing the square equation look like? It will be some number in front of the bracket square here, and then it's x minus h plus k, isn't it? 
So you can find out this is exactly look very alike. Do you see something bracket square? And then do you see some constant at, at the back here? Yeah, they are very much the uh they're very very much the same. So therefore they only give three mark. So since I know my maximum since this is O, if I draw an X axis and Y axis over here, you pretty much you know the maximum value. If this is coordinate, you know it's something X and 75, right? So you, you should know your K in this case is 75. That means P plus 30 will be 75. Because this is how we get the maximum values of Y from the K, isn't it? From the constant. So P basically is just 45. Very easy. And then they ask you to find the distance uh, between O to E. Basically, they want to know like the, uh, the distance from O to E. They want you to find this one. Actually, it's uh, considered quite easy. I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. Yes, I guess it's quite easy. Okay, so from here, x, uh, x minus 50. x minus 50 means what? If x minus 50, I can get the axis symmetry, isn't it? x minus 50 equals 0, x equals 50. So this one is the axis symmetry. So what's the meaning for axis symmetry here? The axis symmetry here actually means, actually he will cut the maximum point at 50, isn't it? So if here is 50, here will be another 50. So this one, distance of OE is just 50 plus 50. So it's just 100 um, cm. Yep, just like this, very easy. Of course, you don't need to actually to find the coordinate because some students are trying to find the coordinate. You can do so if you want. I guess you will get the same answer also if you want to find the coordinate E. Okay, let's, let's say you do not understand about axis symmetry. You only think about the... Uh, not, it doesn't mean wrong. I mean, I teach you another method. Alright, since I know P is 45, so let's say I want to find the coordinate E. Coordinate A is on the x-axis. On the x-axis means what? fx equal to 0. So I try to make fx equal to 0. So basically I get 0 equals to negative 3 over 100. And then this is x minus 50 square plus 45 plus 30 plus 75. So the first thing I do is I move the 75 to the other side, minus 75. And then I will move this one to the other side. It's multiply negative 100 over 3 equals to x minus 50 square. Then, of course, we will solve this one. We will solve this one. Uh, I guess this one can divide by 3. I get 25. And then this one will be 2, 5, 0, 0. And then I move the square to the other side. becomes square root. This is x minus 50. So this one, x square root, 100, uh, 2, 5, 0, 0. You will get positive, negative 50. x equals x minus 50. So if, if you continue to do this one, you will get 2x coordinate. x equals to... Uh, 50 plus 50 or x will equals to negative 50 plus 50 so you will get x equals to 0 or x equals to 100 okay if you get two of these coordinate then you can come back over here so the first information tell you x is 0 is obviously and then this one x is 100 so the distance is still 100 but then because I guess this is just two mark so if you understand, you can get the axis symmetry from the x minus 50. You use this method, it's very fast. Okay? Yeah, so far so good. Yeah, yes, midpoint. You can think this is midpoint. Yeah, midpoint is a very good idea also. Okay? But then you must very be careful. Because this graph, you can so easy to get because it actually starts from the zero. It starts from origin. So if this value here is 4, you know here will be 8. Okay, it's very easy because of midpoint. However, if the question wants to trap you a bit, the, cur the curve actually go beyond the zero, and then it tell you this is four. Okay, in this case, you have to find coordinate because you do not know what is the distance here. So you cannot assume the distance here is any value. You cannot do the assumption here. But then if the curve actually touch the zero, then you can do the assumption here because it touched the zero. Okay, you must very be careful because I just worry sometimes the KBAT question trying to trap you. Okay, so let's move on to number six. Okay, this is uh, indices and I don't think this is indices. When I see this thing, I guess it's a log because 
5, 3 and 6 have no related. So if this case, this kind of case have no related, I will not waste time to try to change them into something power of 5 or power of 3. So what I will do is I will just use log for the whole question. So let me let LG stand for log base 10 uh, because I just want to save some time. So I will, say, I will add log for both sides. So this is 3x and then this is log 6, 2x plus minus 1. All right, and then log basically it tell us it tell us we can actually. Okay, before I do this, let, let me just simplify the equation first. Because both also power of x, so I can say this is five multiplied three power of x. This is six two x minus one. Okay, when they are same power, actually you can you can multiply their number. So I just give you some example. So let's say 2 power of 2 multiply 4 power of 2. Okay, this one basically is 4 multiply 16. And you get 64, right? What if I factorize out the power of 2? I get 2 multiply 4. This is 2. Okay, this is 8. 8 squared is still 64. Alright, so that means whenever they have same power, you can just factorize. If 2 power of a multiply 4 power of a, you can just factorize out the a and then you multiply the number. Okay, you get 8 power of a. Okay, this is just some basic rule of indices. But I worry some of you cannot understand, so I just explain it a little bit. So this is 15 power of x equals to 6, 2x minus 1. Okay, I will add log from here. It will make my life easier a bit. Alright, so this is 6, 2x minus 1. And law also always tell us power we can move in front, power we can move in front and become multiplied. So this one basically is x log 1, 5. And then this one is 2x minus 1. And then log 6, log 6. Alright, then what I do next is uh, I will basically, yeah, I, I multiply it. Yeah, so I will, I will say log 1, 5, multiply x, so I get 1.176x. And then this one, log 6, I will multiply with 2x. So I multiply 2 using calculator, so I get 1.556x minus log 6. Log 6 is basically is 0 0.778. Two. Ah, 0, 7, 8, it's fine. Alright, so then x and x I will join together. So this is 0 0.778, I will move here. So this one I will use 1.556 minus 1.176. So I will get 0 0.38x. So x is just use this number 0 0.778 divided by 0 0.38. So you will get the answer is 2.047. Okay, it's just a simple log question, but then of course you need to understand how to do this kind of log questions. Okay, so far so good. Anything you want to ask before I move on to the next one? Okay, if no problem. But for log question, when you do, I want to mention something. You take at least three decimal. Of course you can take four decimal, but you do take two decimal. Because if you take two decimal, your answer will be very inaccurate. Okay. If okay, then how to press 2x minus 1? Oh, okay. I don't really press 2x minus 1. But what I do over here is I will use log 6 minus 2, uh, multiply 2. So this value basically is log 6 multiply 2. And then I will use log 6 multiply negative 1. Then I get this one. Okay. I hope I answer your question. So let me move on. Okay, good. Okay, this one, given that x equals to p over a, simplify. Okay, this one basically asks you to simplify, so I guess we need to simplify. Alright, so, 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 okay. Okay, let me just, just do, because I, have, I haven't did this question, I mean I haven't did this paper before I conduct this class, so everything I did here is just based on my knowledge. So I hope it should be okay. So first thing is multi uh, they are multiplied, 16 multiplied x squared, multiply will become plus. Alright, and then this one is 3 minus, this one should be log 2 p power of 3. 
okay then okay 16 I know 16 is 2 power of 4 and log rule tell me that 4 basically I can move in front so I will get 4 if I move in front the 4 should be somewhere here and this one I'm not sure why I couldn't erase that one I think yeah this one actually a bit lag already okay anyways log 2 2 4 so I couldn't erase anything this is funny okay <laughs> yep it's okay I just write again so therefore I will get log 2 log 2 2 is 1 the 4 I will move in front so basically this one later will become 0 minus okay this one okay this one this one yeah I think I moved the 2 in front also lah. 2 this is log 2x we know x basically equals to p over a isn't it so over 3 minus okay this one I think I moved back the 3 in front this is log 2p because what I see over here is I can do some something for this one okay because this one is divide right divide means log 2p minus log 2a so this one is basically is log 2p minus this one is basically is 2 power of 3 so this one is equal to 3 and then you have a bracket 2 outside right yes so therefore I will simplify like this okay so we simplify this is 4 minus 2 log 2p minus 3 over 3 minus 3 log 2p alright then I guess I see something like log 2p and log 2p so I try to simplify it so the two negative 2 I multiply into the both okay so basically I will have 4 and then this one I multiply the back number first lah. Ah, it's the same it's the same minus 2 log 2p plus 6 over this one can I okay it's fine maybe I can factorize out the 3 1 minus log 2p and I do the one last step this one will become 10 minus 2 log 2p over 3 bracket 1 minus log 2p or you want me to simplify the top here basically I can factorize out the 2 so if I factorize out the 2 here the 10 will become 5 this one will become 1 so it will be 5 minus log 2p yeah I guess this is the maximum I can simplify I don't think I can simplify any further let me see what the question one just ask me to simplify then I think I simplified already is there anything I can do here I don't think so I I guess this one should be the final answer how you get P over A yeah the P over A actually is from here X equals to P over A is actually given yep so can I straight away substitute the P inside the original equation yeah you can straight away substitute okay you actually give me some idea yeah yeah you can substitute the P into here yeah because P actually equals to AX I think you can substitute also because this question is a bit confusing the question doesn't say they want live in terms of P or live in terms of X so therefore this is how how I solve it and then how I get until the end I think I can I did I do something wrong okay let me just double check my equation so this one I move the 4 so 4 minus uh, okay this is x square x square move the 2 in front then become x x is p over a and then p over a is p minus log 2 so this is 3 okay and then bottom is basically I factorize out the 3 
let me see I think some some way I do wrong because the final answer in the marking scheme is negative 2 over 3 so I just like double checking here ah this is plus why this one is minus this is positive because this is 16 multiply x square isn't it this is positive yeah I find the place I do mistake this is positive this is positive so this one will be negative yeah then this one on the top here I will get negative 2 and then yeah 6 my uh, 4 minus 6 is negative 2 plus 2 log 2p okay so then I basically I factorize out the I factorize out the negative 2 then I will get 1 minus log 2p over 3 1 minus log 2p yeah then simplified simplified I will get negative 2 over 3 done yeah this is the answer so sorry sir apologize what I mean is x yeah of course you can straight away substitute you can straight away substitute the x into the you can straight, straight away substitute the x into the x here it's the same thing it's the same thing yeah because at the end you just need to get negative 2 over 3 but this question 3 mark for me I, I guess it's just too much <laughs> of course if you understand log very well actually you can do quite fast okay so far any one of you do not understand about this question yeah actually you can try to redo this question it's not too bad if okay then I'm going to move on to number 8 okay Rainy use different size of square to form the patterns as shown in the diagram A so okay this is square so square means everything is 80x huh? because this is square okay because this is square if they if here they cut at the midpoint every square every rectangle here you see is a square all right okay if given the length of the la largest square is 80x and the length of the subsequent is decrease 50 percent so that's mean I know this one is 40x and then I know this is 20x I know this is 10x and then I know this is 5x so they will keep on decrease 50 percent okay this is what the question trying to means write down the write down the area of the first three square okay it's simple the first square is 80 because they want the area you must pay attention on the keywords which is area here so if they want uh, the area so what I will do over here is uh, the area basically 80 that 80 1600 x square okay so for the second one is 40x times 40x what happened to my math 80 that 80 is 6400 x square and the next one is 40 that 40 so basically the next one is 1600 x square okay so the next one is 20 multiply 20 isn't it so it's 400 x square so the next one is oh they want only first three term isn't it first three sequence so done okay this one is just multiply b find the area in the six square so i think this is progression topic so first i find r first r is the second term divided by first term Obviously, you know this is GP. Huh? You, you, you don't tell me this one you feel is AP. This is not AP. So x squared, x squared simplified. So this one divided by 16, I guess is 1 over 4. Alright, so R is 1 over 4. So I will f f find a 6, right? So I will find T6. Formula for Tn is ARN minus 1. So my A is 6400 x squared. And my R is basically 1 over 4. 6 minus 1 is power of 5 so I just use a calculator so I will use 1 over 4 power of 5 and then multiply 6 4 0 0 so I will get the answer is 6.25 x square okay yeah you just need to understand the concept it won't be too difficult How you know it's AP or GP? Okay, you want to know it's AP or GP, one of the ways is you do some testing. If 
the t2 minus t1 is same with the t3 minus t2, then it is AP. If t2 over t1 will equal to t3 divided by t2, this is GP. Okay, let's say just now I used uh, 1600 over 640, I get 1 over 4, right? I try to use 400x squared, divide 1600x squared. I will get 1 over 4 also. But if I minus, of course I won't get the same value. This is how I know it's AP or GP. Okay, I hope I do answer your question. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm a bit sorry about today because today actually I got flu. I mean, I actually get cold. Okay, okay. let's move on to number 9. I guess it's a progression question also. A, a company sponsor 1,000 bottles of the drinks during a promotion. Okay, the company distributed 86 bottles of the drinks on the first day and increased 12 bottles on the subsequent days. Okay, so, so that's been total. That means total over here will be 1,000 bottles. So the first day is 86 and then continue he will actually give another 12 water so it will be 98 and then give another 12 water will be 110 and then give another 12 water will be 122 so obviously this one because it's given plus 12 right so you know this is AP okay this is how I know that and then the question asks you to find the number of bottles of drink left after one week so that means I want to know what total one week, how many bottles is used. So what I will do, I will find S7 because from the first day plus until the seventh day. So I know my A is 86. I know my D is 12. All right, so I, SN for AP is N over 2, 2A plus N minus 1D. All right, this is just the formula. So it will be 7 over 2. 2a is 2 multiplied at 86, right? So you get 2 multiply 86 is 172 plus n minus 1 is 7 minus 1. 7 minus 1 will be 6. d will be 12. Alright, so then this is just math. Plus 6 times 12 is 72 and then multiply 7 over 2. 7 over 2. So you will get 854 bottle after one week so yeah they give 1000 bottle right they are not finding this answer huh? they ask about bottle of the drink left so i have to use 1000 this is left huh? all right i use 1000 minus 854 so 1000 minus answer i should get the bottle left is 146 bottle all right so far so good should be very easy this one and then we do about b let me change color all right, B. Number of bottles of drinks given away on the 10th day. So I want to find T10. So A plus N minus 1D. All right. A plus N minus 1D. This is TN. All right. My A is 86 plus 10 minus 1 is 9. D is 12. So yeah, just do math. Plus 9 times 12. So it's 194. Yep. This one should be very easy. How to know when to use SN or TN? Okay, SN means you have to sum all together because this one, they, they want to find number of bottles of drink left after one week. So that means every day, first day, this is number, second day, third day, fourth day, you have so many days. So you want to know after seven days, total you use how many? bottle then in this case since you want to know about sum of them means you want to know the sum then you have to use sn but in this one they want to find exactly number how many number of bottle they given away given away on the 10 day itself so on the 10 day itself that means you don't need to sum when you don't need to sum you use the end all right this one actually do not have any specific for formula like tell you when to use sn or when to use tn this one basically you need to understand the question you need to understand what the question want then only you can understand when to use sn and when to use tn okay and i and i see few get well soon message yeah thanks for that yeah okay so <laughs> let's move on to 10. 
Okay, so okay, ten should be li linear law, I guess. So diagram ten A will show the curve equation four over x plus three, and then a straight line obtains where the curve is uh, reduced to a linear form. Okay, so write the y axis in terms of x or y. So basically, they want okay the straight line diagram ten B intersect the y axis at H. Alright, so basically you the question asks you to find the capital Y. So what I will do is how to make this equation into a straight line. This is your objective now. So this is y equals to four over x plus three. So yeah, so in order to solve this one, I guess what I will do is I will multiply x for every single one. If I multiply x here for the whole equation, I will basically get xy equals to 4 plus 3x. Alright, so you just multiply x here. Alright, so this one, if I change it into the y equals to mx plus c, this is xy equals to 3x plus 4. Why I know this equation is correct? Because here he give you a very big hint. The x acid is remain x. That means this one must be remain x. So this is my y. So therefore, my y over here is just xy. Okay, this is y equals to m x plus c. This is my c written it. So b, the ask about h. H is just a c equals to 4. That's all. So that's why they give you 2 mark only. Of course, okay, you might ask me like why I no need to multiply x. Yeah, you can try an error. You can try to multiply x square. If let's say you multiply x square, you got x square y equals to 4x plus 3x square. In this case, you can find out something very, very interesting is everything also have x and y. So this one impossible have c in this equation. So this equation is wrong. Or you can say you, you might try to multiply y. You multiply y, you get y square equals to 4 uh, this is y over x plus 3y. And then everything also have x and y. You do not have c. So this equation is wrong. So it's sort of try the error. But then because I see the x here, so I know if I multiply x here, I can make this one become a constant. Constant. What I mean constant here is c. Because if I multiply 4 over x with x, I simplify, I left a constant 4 only. 4 itself do not have any variable, so I know it's a constant. Okay, this is how I solve this question. Even it's just 2 mark, but then a lot of knowledge needed for this 2 mark question. Okay. So, okay, I move on to 11. Anything you want to ask before I move on? No, right? Okay, good. 11. It's 2 mark also. Given that 2 straight line, px plus 3y equals to 5 and y over q minus x over 6 equals to 1 are parallel. Alright, parallel should be easy. Because parallel, at least I know I can do the... Okay, parallel actually over here actually means same gradient. Alright, so I will need to find gradient. And I find this equation is very similar to the gradient form, uh, the, yeah, the, the linear equation in, in terms of gradient. Uh, gradient what I've said it's all intercept intercept form because intercept form tell us is something like x over a plus y over b equals to 1 and then a is the x intercept and b is the y intercept alright so so therefore I will rearrange this one so I rearrange this one first so this one basically is x over negative 6 plus y over q equals to negative uh, equals to 1 and we learn about gradient formula. Gradient equals to negative y intercept over x intercept. Isn't it? This is one of the gradient formula. If you don't, don't know this, please remember this one. So from here, I know y intercept is q. x intercept is negative 6. So my gradient is q over negative 6. And then for this one, I want to get my gradient. I will rearrange into the y equals to mx plus c. So therefore, I will have 3y equals to uh, negative px plus 5. So my y basically equals to negative p over 3x plus 5 over 3. 
And then this one, we can know our gradient is this one. So I will say negative P over 3 equals to negative Q over 6. The question asks me P in terms of Q. So P basically negative and negative cancel out. Lah. So equals to 3Q over 6. Simplified, P equals to Q over 2. Done. Okay, you can do like this. Or, let's say you do not want, you do not like about intercept form. You, you say you might not understand about this one. Of course, you can do step by step. You make this one into the Y equals to MS plus C. And then you take out the M and then make do the comparison and then you can still get the same answer. I guess. So, so far so good. If okay, then it should be fine. So let me move on to 12. Okay, diagram 12 show the PQR. Triangle PQR, given that the area of the PQR is 59. Okay, this one just use the area formula. Area is something like half x1, x2, x3, repeat the x1, and then this is y1, y2, y3, repeat the y1. Okay, this is formula for area in the geometric coordinates. If you do not know this, please know this now. <laughs> Alright, so since they say PQR, I will follow the sequence P first, then Q, then R. Alright, so P is negative 3, 10, Q is 6, 2, and this is K, negative 4. I repeat the first one, negative 3, 10, and then equals to 59. Alright, then, of course the first thing I do is, actually I will move the half to the other side and multiply 2. So this one will give you 118, I guess. Okay, and over here you must know how, how to solve inside a uh, modulus. This square plus... I mean, this one multiply this one, plus this one multiply this one, plus this one multiply this one, and then minus this one multiply this one, plus this one multiply this one, plus this one multiply this one. Okay, maybe I say too fast, so let me just work it out. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. This is negative 24 plus 10k. Minus the other way. This is 12. This is uh, 2k. And this one will be 60. Okay, then I will solve this one and I find k. So this one will be negative 30 plus 10k minus this one will be 72 minus 2k. Okay, we of course we have to solve this equation in order to get k. This is 118 equals to minus 30 minus okay minus 72. 2 so it's minus 102 10k minus this one will be positive 8k all right so i say the modulus if you move modulus to the other side you get positive negative 118 equal to negative 102 plus 8k but in this case i would i will ignore about negative 11k i, I will negative I will ignore about negative 118 why because this is area area i can't get negative so i will ignore about negative so i will say 8k minus 102 equals to 118. Suppose you have all and then this one equals to negative 118, but ignore about this one. Because area can't get negative. So 8k, I move to the other side, it will plus 102 should be, should be, should be, should be 220. <laughs> I mean 320. Hey, 220, isn't it? My math is just getting bad. <laughs> Let me use calculator. <laughs> yeah, 220. So k is just. 220 divided by 8. Okay, 27.5. Yep, just like this. Do I do any current mistake in the plus or minus thing? Yeah, because sometimes I might I tend to make those mistakes, but I hope I don't. Let me just check, just check, just check, just check. Yeah. Shouldn't be correct. I I maybe should be correct. <laughs> Okay, yep, so far so good. Okay, question number 13. Diagram 13 show the tr trigonometry graph function. Okay, ask you to find A, B, and N. Should be very easy. Okay, so first I will do N first. How to find N? You from the maximum and minimum, you divide into two. You make it, okay, you divide half. Alright, so from negative 1, or 
actually here it do for you already. Uh, it's two. So suppose it on the x-axis. Suppose all all the sine cos tangent graph is it start from zero, right? So the the now the new x-axis actually it moved to the two already. So it's just plus two. So n equals to positive two. Okay, because the graph actually like shift up two units. All right. So and if a is the amplitude, amplitude is a sequence from the from the new x-axis. So this x equal to, uh, y equal to two. I call it new x-axis. So this one will be your a. Okay, or this one you can be A. So 2 obviously is plus 3. This is minus 3. Do you see that? Minus 3 plus 3. So A equals to 3. Alright. Okay, B you have to see how many cycle is half in 2 pi. So P, B is how many cycle is half in 2 pi. 2 pi is a very crucial word here. So you can see you have 1 cycle. This is 1 cycle in cost, right? 2 cycle. So B is just 2. Alright, so... It's very simple. Three mark. So far, so good. <laughs> Anything you want to ask? No? Good. If you don't have, move on already. If you have, please stop me. Immediately. I mean, yes. 14. Okay. Okay. This one, you must very good in drawing. Because A, actually, there's no math methods to actually do that. So we must good in drawing. So yeah, we want to know there's how many x and y. So of course you have to know about triangle law. In order to since PQ is a resultant vector, the other two vectors should be something plus something. The arrow must must be okay. This is starting point, this is ending point, right? So the arrow must go to the ending point. Do you see that? Go to the ending point. This is what I mean. Alright, so okay, what I will do here is I pretty much I will do some drawing. Okay, so let's draw. Okay, let's see. Since I want to go into here, I will do y first. Y is basically like break two box. So one y, two y. Okay, and then maybe three y. Okay, this is one y, two y, three y. And then x is two box, right? So one x, one x. Okay, but of course x must be negative negative because the arrow have to face down. So yeah, <laughs> therefore PQ is equal to uh, 3y minus 2x. Okay, this is just about the drawing. Yeah, I can't teach you in uh, I mean in, in mathematic logic. <laughs> okay, so far can understand this one, right? So let's move on to the second one. Uh B okay 14 P diagram space the vector p and q okay what the question one diagram 14b in the answer space show p and vector q okay they ask you to draw the line segment represent 2p minus 3q so if right so if write it the other way around okay that's me y first then x yeah definitely it's correct you do pq equal negative 2x plus 3y. Yeah, you can always do that. It's correct. No problem. Okay, now I will need 2p and minus 3q. It's another drawing. Okay, 2p, I assume, is like 1, 2. Because p is going this way. And minus 2, 2q and minus 3q will be opposite, right? Okay, then I do not want to draw my 2p here, not enough space. Because opposite direction means I have to go there. So 2p is 1, 2. 1p, 2p. And 3q, okay, it's, it's negative q. I will do negative, because negative 3q. So 1, 2, 3. Okay, so of course this is not my answer. My answer is a green color one. From here, use the ruler. Please use the ruler. Okay, okay, so... Yeah, so you just draw this one. <laughs> I'm not sure how how they give you mark, but they ask you to draw the line segment. So yeah, you just use ruler to draw this line segment. But must draw very nice lah. Of course, in this case, I just use free hands. So let me. Oh my god. So this one should be here. 
two, four, six. Okay, so yeah, I just want to draw it very nice and I will show you. Yeah, this is the correct one. Yeah, of course, in this line, over here, you must draw the arrow also. Please do not forget about the arrow. Okay, and then you can erase your working or you can leave your working there. I think it should be fine. Oh no, I think erase the work, your working. <laughs> yeah, or, or actually you can show your working, but then here you write 2P minus 3Q over here. So he know actually 2P minus 3Q actually stand for this line. All right, so let's move on to 15. Another vector question. Okay, so yeah, A minus B. So it's very easy. So A minus B, so I will say 11i plus z minus 8i plus kz. Okay, so 8 minus, 11 minus 8 is 3i. 1z minus kz, so it will be uh, plus 1 minus kz. That's all. And okay, give you the modulus of this one is equal to 5. Okay, so you have to understand modulus in vector mean magnitude. Okay, magnitudes over here actually mean Pythagoras a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so actually it's mean length, la. it's mean the length. All right, so yeah, so this one we do, so you say equal to 5. So what we do is over here, we do the square root 3 square plus 1 minus k square equals to 5. Of course, square root, I will move to the other side. Okay, the eraser function not work again. This is 9 equals to... Oh my god, it just don't let me erase. Okay, 9 plus 1 minus 2k plus k square equals to 25. Okay, and then I solve this equation. So... Yeah, k square minus 2k, 1, this is 10, minus 25 minus 15 equals to 0. And then I will continue, just factorize it. So this is k, k, 15, I will use 5 and 3. Negative 2, I will get negative positive. So k equals to 5 or k equals to negative 3. Very easy. So far so good. Should be okay, right? Okay, good. Oh my god. Yes, I guess it's stuck a little bit. So I will need to close this one and on and open it again because the app stuck already. You can see see it, <laughs> see it here. So yeah, just give me a few minutes. I until question 15, right? Yeah, I'm going to off this one. And then you can see my screen. And then I'm going to open it again. This is Microsoft OneNote. I hope everything is here. Yes, good. <laughs> just the 15B is, is missing. Yes, but we solved just now. So if you don't understand, please go to watch the video. Just play back. Okay, so 16. Okay, just give me a break for maybe one minute. I, I get some drinks because I just talk non-stop for one hour plus. So, blow. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we rest for one minute. I go and get some drink. Yeah. You left 60 days, so make sure you drink more water because it's very important for your health. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I, I don't think I need one minute because yeah, we, we're running out of time. Now 16. I think total will be it will be 25 questions, if not mistaken. Yes, it's 25 questions, so it's 16. We still have nine more to go. And maybe today class will until 10.30 because we actually we start late. We start late. But yeah, let's just do my best. Okay? Okay, let's start. About 60. 
Okay, this is differentiation. So find the values of this one. So basically what I will do is what I will do, what I will do, what I will do is equal to fx. Okay, 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 yeah. So what I will do is I will start from here. Okay, so integrate 2 to 3. This is 2 plus fx. What is my fx? My fx is the whole thing. So I will copy down d dx x squared over x minus 1. Okay, dx just means you will interval of x. Alright, dx here doesn't do much. If dy means the 2 will become 2y. If dw means 2 will become 2w. Okay, it's, it's sort of, you must interval of x, then only you can integrate. This is the meaning of dx, but it doesn't do much. So what I will do is, I will integrate, I will integrate 2 to 3, 2. Plus, I will integrate 2 to 3, d dx, and x squared, over x minus 1. Alright, and then dx you can just ignore it. Alright, so if you watch my, my integration video, you know integrate and d dx, basically this is integrate, this differentiate, they can, they can simplify. It's something like I go this way and, and going back. Okay, this is the differentiate and integrate. This is d dx, this is integrate. So they can basically they can simplify. But after you simplify, what happens over here is this one will become, you don't need to integrate this one. It will straight away become 3 and 2 here. Mean you already, it meant it's something like, after you simplify, it's something like you already integrate it. Alright, then of course you still need to integrate 2, become 2x. And then 3, 2. And then you just substitute 3 into here and it's minus 2. So substitute 3 into x, I get 6 minus 4. Here I got a plus here. So I plus, I substitute 3 into the x here. So I get 9 over 2. Minus, I substitute 2 here, I will get 4 over 1. And then this is 2 plus 2 plus half, isn't it? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it should be half. So it should be 5 over 2. Or you can call it 2.5. Alright, four mark. This idea is very important in the integration topic because a lot of students were trying to do something like x integrate x squared x minus 1. I tell you, in your SPM syllabus, there's not possible to integrate this one. Why? Because in your SPM syllabus, the integration do not have the quotient rule or product rule for integration. So don't ever try to integrate this one. However, you can integrate this one if the equation is like this. Uh, so you, what you can do is you can separate them minus 1 over x squared then only you start to do the integration but then for the first one you can't integrate right so let's move on to 17 all right in the 17 diagram 17 actually show the curve graph y equals to 4x squared which intersect the straight line okay so 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 yeah so yeah y equals fx the point 336 given that 30 fx equals to this one okay find the area of the shaded area uh, find the area of the shaded region okay this one actually is not too bad but then this one is a bit confusing okay so what i will do is in order to from 3 to 0 i will change to 0 to 3 but when I change to 0 to 3, what you need to do is you have to add a negative for, the, for opposite here. So negative, negative basically gives you positive 64, not 6x. It's 64, so it's 64. Alright, so that means you integrate the fx from 0 to 3, you basically get this one. So now if I want to get the shaded area, you find out actually you have a trapezium here. Do you see an area of trapezium? So if I use the area of trapezium, minus the area under the curve, I actually I can get the shaded, uh, shaded region easily. And I know the green color part because this is 0 to 3. This is when I integrate the, the y. When I integrate the y from 0 to 3, I, get, I will get a green color one. And this is exactly this one. So I know this one is 64. So this question actually is very easy. Shaded region, I will use the trapezium formula. Trapezium is, uh, this is 36. And of course, I will need to find what is the length here. Okay, this is uh, uh, 
Wait, the y equals to fx is a straight line. No, no, no. I do something very wrong. <laughs> yeah, I just did something wrong. Okay, let me. I I thought this is y equals to fx, but in in fact it's not. Okay, so fx is a straight line. So what I will do is, of course, I will. Uh, in order to find the shaded region, I will integrate the I will integrate the straight line. Minus, I will integrate four x square from zero to three. The straight line is from zero to three also. Okay, so if I integrate the straight line, I have ready. When I, when you integrate the straight line, what happens is if you integrate the straight line from a to b, you will get all the area under the straight line, a to b. Right, this is the logic. So if I integrate this straight line, actually I will get the area of trapezium. Right, this, which is 64 minus area under the curve which is the green color one so I will integrate this one I will get 4x cubed over 3 and then 0, 3 okay so this is 64 minus of course I will substitute 3 into here first this is 4 multiplied 27 over 3 minus 0 so this is 64 this one should be 9 minus 36 so this one should be 28 yep unit square Okay, so I hope my previous wrong step doesn't, uh, doesn't confuse you. Why you need to exchange 0 and 3? Okay, because of what? Okay, because if from... Okay, because in the integration, we always write the smaller value here, and then this one will write the bigger value. If, of course, you can from 3 to 0, but then from 3 to 0, if you do the from from 3 to 0 over here you get negative 64 some students might think this one have no difference with 0 to 3 and then they will use uh, they will use negative 64 here and then at the end you your area here you will get negative uh, negative maybe 100 and then you might think this is positive 100 and then you will get the whole thing wrong because when we do the integration we always do from the smaller to the largest value so we always want to make sure is in a smaller from 0 to 3 so this is the reason why I change and I find out the other side is negative this is another reason why I want to exchange also I hope I do answer your question okay so let's move on to <laughs> you see this one is actually <laughs> left here yeah. okay very quick close close and open I'm not sure this is one note problem or yeah let me just open yep the things is gone so okay, so eighteen. Yeah, when I see something like this, I think this is K KBAT question also. I hope it's not too hard. Okay, a cylinder barrier flow on the water, as shown in the diagram eighteen. The diameters of the parallel is one hundred centimeter. So that means the radius is fifty. Okay, so the height of the point P. So the highest point of P, the highest point of P is 80 centimeter above the water level. That means we know something here from the P here to the water level is 80 cm. All right, so, okay. A asks you to find the air angle AOB where O is the center of the circular cross section of the barrier so I assume O is somewhere on the middle I call this one O so they want to find the angle this is 50 this is 50 and I of course I will need some more information um, 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 is the 80 help me in some way? yes the 80 at least tell me something at least it tell me over here is 20 because the diameter is 100 isn't it okay so i guess i can know here is 30 okay so i will try to draw out because okay i will try to draw out the the o a b here okay this is 50 if this length is 30 I can basically use trigo to find one of the angle and then this angle I will multiply 2 because the whole AOB because AOB actually equals to 2 angle isn't it so I will find one of it first so you can see the big triangle here this is 50 this is 30 
adjacent and hypotenuse, I will use cos. Cos delta equals to uh, 30 over 50. And then I find the delta. Do I need to leave my answer in radian? Or in radian? Okay, change your calculator in radian before you do that. Okay, so shift cos 3 over 5. So you get 0 0.727. I mean 0 0.927. 0 0.927 radian okay but this is not the AOB so angle AOB need to multiply 2 so it's 1.855 radian okay because AOB itself have two angle as I mentioned just now so for part B the area of the cross section is below the water level basically they want you to find this one so actually it's not too hard because you just need to know you use the area of sector since you know the angle is 1.855 and you know the radius is 50 so area of sector minus the area of triangle so if if area of sector is the everything if the everything here you minus area of triangle then you can get the part you want which is this part Okay, so basically now we will use sector to minus triangle. Okay, yeah, just tell you the logic. So, yeah, in order to find the shaded area, so I will say, uh, I will write area only. Uh, will equals to area of sector is half r square theta 1.5855 minus triangle. Triangle is half A B sine C. I hope you remember about this formula. Okay, this is A B, this is angle C. Half A B sine C. This area of triangle. Okay, so if you know everything about this, yeah, the rest is just mathematics. I mean, you just number, solve it. 50 square multiple 1.855 divided by 2. So I will get 2318.75 minus 50 square multiply sine 1.855. Make sure you calculate it in radian because this is not the degree. Right? Divide 2. 1199.86. So 2318.75 minus answer. So I will get 1118.90 centimeter square. Is this cm just now? Yep, this is cm. So it will be cm square. Okay, it's jam again. <laughs> what happens to Microsoft? Okay, so so far so good. Before we, we restart and go to the next question. Should be easy, right? This one, okay. So, yeah. Since the number <laughs> follow me, so I have to close it or open again. It's so annoying, but there's no way I can do. Okay, so nineteen. Okay, so okay. Diagram nineteen show the histogram represents the mark obtained by the group of students in an MF test. So yeah, I see a histogram. Obviously, this histogram. Alright, estimate the mood mark of the student. Okay, mood is very easy. What you do over here is what you do over here is basically yeah you find the highest one, this is mode because this is higher, and then you connect this corner to this corner, and then connect this vertex to this vertex, and then you will see a intersection point, right? From the intersection point there. You draw a line, go down. I mean, if you must use ruler, you should be able to get one value here. And then this one will, will be your mode mark. Okay, so obviously here I couldn't see very clear, so I just like estimate maybe it's 37.5 or 38.5. Yep, just based on your... Yeah, just teach you the method uh, because the real answer is not important here. Find the median mark. Okay, median mark is a bit tricky here. Okay, it's because you know about median formula, right? 
So for the median boundary uh, formula, it will be lower boundary of the median plus n over 2 minus cumulative frequency before the median class over frequency of the median class multiplied class size. Okay, so first thing is I want to find the uh, what is the total frequency. Okay, so write down the number and plus them together. 6, 8, 12, 10, 4, 2. Okay, so sum of frequency, use calculator lah. So all the number plus together, 6 plus 8 plus 12 plus 10 plus 4 plus 2, 42. Okay, in order to find the which uh, median class for in which category, I will use n plus 1 over 2 th. So it's 42 plus 1 divided by 2. So it's 21.5 th. So the median will be 21.5, which is for in this class. Because this class is 20.5 until 30.5, isn't it? So therefore, I know this, this one is the median class. So, or I can say median class is between, the, uh, yeah, is between 20.5 to 30.5 because we get 21.5. Alright, so see you know this median class, so you need to take the lower boundary of the median class, which is 20.5. So I take 20.5 plus n over 2, which is 42 over 2, minus cumulative frequency before the median class. So this median class, before the median class, you only have 6. So you just minus 6. Alright, if, if here I have another 2 here, so you have to 2 plus 6, then you have to minus 8. Because it's cumulative frequency, alright? But in this case, you only have 6. Minus the frequency of the median class itself. This median class, the frequency is basically is... Oh my god, this one is not A. I plus something wrong. This one should be 7. <laughs> Let me just redo it. 7, this is 12, this is... Don't tell me they have decimal. This is 10, yeah, should not have decimal. This is 42. We'll just say, hey, this one should be 41. I guess. Let me just plus together. Because I thought, just like I thought it's 8. 4 plus 7 plus 12 plus 10 plus 4 plus 2. Yeah, it's 41. So 41 plus 1 divided by 2. Yeah, the, it's, yeah it's still correct. The median actually 4 is the 21. 21 is 4 in this class. Okay, but then this one will be 41 over 2. Okay, divide by the frequency of the median class itself, which is 7. Class size, class size is just your upper boundary minus lower boundary. Okay, so class size is 10. 30.5 minus 20.5, you get 10. And then you solve it. So, yeah, I will solve the thing inside the bracket one first. 41 divided by 2, and then minus 6, and then divide by 7. And then multiply 10. And then plus 20.5. So you will get the answer should be... There's something wrong. Let me just do again. 41 divided by 2 minus 6 divided by 7 multiply 10 plus 20.5. I get 40 something. There is wrong. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I did something wrong. Okay, so this 21 is seen based on frequency. It's not based on the class. We have to from the frequency to find a class. No wonder I got something wrong. Ah. So all here is wrong. So it's based on frequency. Frequency is means what? It's based on cumulative frequency. This is 6. So this one over here will be 13. 13 plus 12 is 25. So from 13 to 25, 21 actually fall into this class. So this one is the median class. It's from 30.5 to 40.5 I thought 21, you can straight away see the 21 here it, that, that one is so wrong 
I'm so sorry about teaching something wrong here. Okay, so because because my answer just now is it doesn't fall in this class, so I know I teach something wrong. So first thing is since the me this is the median class, first I will take the lower boundary of the median class is 30.5 plus 21, I mean 41 over 2 minor cumulative frequency before this class will be 7 plus 6 13 will be 1 3 divided by the frequency of the median class itself which is 12 you can see it here and the class size is 10 yeah this one should be the correct one 41 divided by 2 minus 13 divided by 12 multiply 10 and then plus 30.5 yeah this is the correct one 36.75 Okay, so because this one is histogram, so just now I'm a bit confusing. Yeah, so this one 20.1 is based on the frequency. So you have to, it's based on the cumulative frequency. I write cumulative frequency is, is better. So you must cumulate. Because you, you might think all the frequency you see, after you see all the frequency, you, you couldn't find 21. Because this one is actually cumulate, cumulate frequency. Is it okay? Or you still very confused about this part? Yes, should be okay. If okay, I'm going to move on. Because we, uh, it's 10 o'clock right now. Okay, good. Okay, the table 20 will show the marks obtained by the student A and student, student B for the five tests. It's probability, I guess. One of the students will be chosen to represent the school for quiz. The mean mark for both students is 54. Okay, it's statistic also, I guess. One of the students will be chosen from... Okay, one of the students will be chosen represented by the school. That means mark for both students. Student A and student B. The mean mark for both students, then I guess is... Plus them, plus all together, divided by 10. Is it so, so simple like this? Okay, so let's do it. <laughs> Okay, since, since you, the question says the means... Okay, let me write it down. The mean is 54. Find the standard deviation of... of find the standard deviation of mark of each student. So right now we have to find the standard deviation it's a bit unusual this question. Let me digest one more time. Five tests. So this is test one, test two, test three, test four, test five. So the mean is 54. The mean for both students. Okay, okay. So the mean for this one is 54. The mean for this one is 54. So, so find the standard deviation. Oh, okay. It's not too bad. Okay. So... In order to do standard deviation, you all, of course you have to know about standard deviation formula. It's square root sum of x square over n minus sum of x over n square. Or, okay, or you can say this is mean square. Right, so x, so this is x, so your x will be test 1, test 2, test 3, test 4, test 5. Uh. Right, so I will say 30 square. Okay, student A. I will say standard deviation of A. Uh. So it will be... 30 square plus 38 square plus 58 square plus 69 square plus 75 square over 5 square root definitely minus mean square 54 square alright so yeah just use a calculator to do this 30 square plus 38 square plus 58 square plus 69 square plus 75 square divided by 5 Alright, then I minus 54 square. And I square root my answer. My final answer is 17.4. Alright, so I will do the same thing for student B. Standard deviation for B. So here, it's the same thing, so I use calculator straight away. Do 40 square plus 48 square plus 50 square plus 60 square plus 72 square. I just... So I get 15188 divided by 5 minus 54 square. So divided by 5 minus 54 square and then square root answer. So I will get my answer is 
zero three. This is four zero. Okay, so they want to find the standard deviation of mark for of each student. So yeah, student A and student B. Determine which student will be chosen to represent the school. Okay, this one, this one is a bit extra knowledge. Okay, if you want to actually, you want to choose the student to join a competition or anything, you want to choose those students have the lowest, lowest standard deviation score because standard deviation actually means the Okay, the highest value of standard deviation means it's not so reliable. So the lowest, uh, the lowest uh, standard deviation means it's more reliable. So for example, if you are Apple, you want to produce iPhone, you want to make sure the factory give you very, very, very low standard deviation in the production of iPhone. Maybe it's just 0 0.000012. So means among one one million iPhone Apple produce, maybe it's only few mistakes. So if the standard deviation value is highest, means the chance of making the iPhone, the broken iPhone, the chance is highest. Okay, this is the meaning of standard deviation. So in this case, the, the question actually asks you to determine which student to choose. So I will choose student B. Because the standard deviation for student B is smaller. I hope the example I give can, can make you understand <laughs> because this is just some random example coming to my, my, my mind and it's hang again so I have to do close and open again so sorry you have to do this one again and again okay 21 <laughs> this one limiting is the first time I see coming out in the exam <laughs> okay see if it come out so I will I hope I still remember how to do because I never do this question for, for years but I guess I can still do. Okay, limit n close to infinity. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, it's 3 multiply infinity plus 5 over infinity. Okay. Oh, okay, let me just uh, simplify this one. Infinity. Okay. Over infinity plus 5 over infinity basically what i do is i, I separate them now become 3n over n plus 5 over n okay this one is actually is a lot more based on common sense infinity infinity i simplified i left 3 and then this one this is the crucial thing when 5 divided by extremely big number you just use your calculator like 5 divided by 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 you will get the value is very, very, very close to zero. So I will say it's a zero. So the answer is just three. If any number divide by the extremely big value, you just get zero. Okay, this, this is the idea. How if the question asks why student B? Okay, you asked about just now, right? If the student asks about, if the question asks about why, you just say because it has the lowest, it has the lower value of standard deviation or you can say the score of standard deviation is lower yeah okay let's move on to 22 yeah three more questions to finish okay so the priority of the football players to score is is 5 over 3 so okay so if it takes it take the part in the three match Find the probability that he scored in at least 2 Okay, so this one N equals to 3 P is the probability of getting score is 3 over 5 Q is just 1 minus P which is 2 over 5 And then R is the uh, how many Okay, no, no need to write R here So in this case, it's at least 2 the match So I will know this is basically X is bigger or equals to 2 At least 2, alright So this one should be P x equals to 2 plus p x equals to 3 because must be b got equals to 2 then this one your r is your r is equal to 2 right of course i hope you remember about formula x equals to r so formula is n c r and then q power of r <laughs> p power of r not q oh my god i can't erase again seriously so n c r p power of r and then q n minus r Alright, so yeah, just substitute the thing into here. So the n is 3, right? So 3c2, 
3 over 5, power of 2, and then 2 over 5, 3 minus 2, 1. Plus 3C3, 3, 3 over 5, power of 3, and 2 over 5, 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, then I will solve this one real quick. So 3C2, use calculator, multiply 3 over 5 square, and then multiply 2 over 5. So you will get decimal 0 0.432. And then plus 3C3 is 1, this power of 0 is 1, so only like 3 over 5, power of 3. Oops. Power of 3, so you will get decimal 0 0.2. So you just sum them together plus 0 0.432. So you will get the one, it will be 0 0.648. Okay, it's very easy. This question shouldn't have any problem. And it's like again, congratulations. <laughs> so close and open again. I think now he's going to lag every one question, every one question. Alright, so. Okay, 23. How many, okay, it's a permutation and combination. So you have two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many five digits number can be formed without repetition? You have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six number, you want to choose five number, and it's a number used permutation, so it's NPR. All right, so you have six number, you choose five. That's all, six P5. So, so for A, it's just six P5, and then you got the answer, 720, very easy. Okay, because in this case, it doesn't give you any condition. The question doesn't say they want even number, they want odd number, they want a number bigger than 5,000 or anything. So they doesn't give you any condition, so you just like 6 number, you choose 5. I think it's only 1 or 2 mark. B, 5 digit odd number less than 50,000. Okay, this is the real difficult one. So let me write down the number I have, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, they want two conditions. First must be odd number. Okay, must be odd numbers. Okay, second must be, so it have first condition must be odd number. Second condition must be less than, less than 50,000. So, now I have five slot. So, since there must be less than 50,000, so that means the first number I can, I can put only like two, three, and four. But if they want odd number, Mean the last digit I put must be 3, 5, and 7. Now I have one problem here. 3 is repeating. So it's 3 repeating, so I will separate them into two different cases. So the first cases I will say begin with 3. Begin with 3. Alright, so that means the 5 digit here, the first number is 3. This one I will say begin with four, uh, 2 and 4. Alright, so the that means the first digit here, I will put 2 or 4. Okay, since I want to make sure they are not repeated, because it's a re without repetition. So, if I first digit, I use 3, the last two digits, I will, I, will, I will, the last digit, I won't use 3, I will use 5 and 7. If first two digit, I mean the first digit, I use 2 and 4, the last digit, I can use 3, 5 and 7, because without repetition. Alright, so, okay, then what I do, Ne what I do next over here is okay first first digit I use one then only one way this one five and seven I choose one is two p1 to put at the last place okay imagine if I use seven here that means if I use five and seven already if I use three and seven how many number I left I left one two three four so on the middle here, I still left four number here. I need to choose three because I have three slot here. Then I multiply, I multiply them. Okay, then I will get some value. I will do the same thing here. First place here is two digit. I have to choose one. Last place here, I have three digit. I have to choose one. And in the middle here, I will still left four digit. I have to choose three. Then I multiply them. And then both answer I plus together. Okay, so yeah. Let me plus together. So 4P3 multiply 2P1. Multiply 1. So the first one I get 48. Plus the second one, 2P1 multiply 4P3 multiply 3P1. So plus 144. So the final answer should be 192.
is 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 a value, right? Yeah, is is the value. So if you imagine, if the first digit I put five, I have five, I have five, two, three, four, six, seven. Like example, this value already bigger than fifty thousand because the the question say cannot bigger than fifty thousand. So there's not possible I put five at the first place. Okay. Yeah, it's mean the value. Yeah, I reply the yao message. So it's hang again, so I have to close and open again. Okay, so let's move on to last two questions. Okay, 24. Given that y equals to x minus 2 squared, find the values of x satisfy the equation. Okay, this question, I think the purpose of this question just make you look like, make it look like very difficult. Okay, but then I think it's still okay. So the first thing is, I ignore about how difficult it is. I will do back what I have to do. First thing is, I will do the first differentiation, which is dy dx. Move the 2 in front, and then minus 1, you get 1. And differentiate whatever inside the bracket. X minus 2, if you differentiate x minus 2, you get 1 only. So this one is just 2x minus 4. Okay, then I will differentiate 2x minus 4 again. Dx squared, I will left 2. Okay, now I get all the value, then I substitute into here. So the first one is x squared, I just copy x squared. D2y dx squared, I got the value already, is 2. Minus dy dx, I got it, it's 2x minus 4. It's over here. And minus y, my y is x minus 2 squared, equal to 0. Okay, just substitute everything here, and then you have to solve this one. And it's hang again. Y is hang all the time. 2x squared, okay, minus 2x plus 4. Okay, this one is x squared minus 4x plus 4. So it will be minus x squared plus 4x minus 4 equal to 0. Since it hang, I'm going to use this area. So 2x squared minus x squared, I left x squared. And then 4x minus 2x, I left 2x. 4, 4, I get 0, equal to 0. So I factorize out x, I get x plus 2 equal to 0. So x equal to 0, or x plus 2 equal to 0. So this one, x equals to negative 2. Done. 4 mark. Right, it's not so difficult. So what you need to do is, you just do as usual, differentiate first time, differentiate second time. And you don't panic about x squared. x squared, you just write x squared. Just write x squared. But then the y here, because you must make sure everything, no, x one. So y here, I will substitute whatever I have in y into it. Okay? Oh, it's not this one, it's this one. Okay, it's very messy. But I guess this one is not too bad to understand. Okay, so it's hang. And we, this is the last chance we close and open because it's 25 already. Okay, so, okay, 25. It's the last one. The discrete random variable x have the binomial distribute the, the binomial probability distribution with n equals to 4. So you can see n from 0 to 4, where n is the number of tries. So we try 4 times. I, I mean, try first one minute, try 0 times. Okay, maximum try 4 times. Find the value of k. So the first thing is you have to understand all the try plus together must equal to 1. Alright, so you can get k easily. So k basically, k equals to 1 minus all the value here. So 1 minus 16 over 81 minus 32 over 81 minus 8 over 81 minus 1 over 81. Alright, so use calculator to do that. So 16, uh, I can use 81 minus 16 minus 32 minus 8 minus 1. So I will get 24 over 81. Of course, you can simplify 24 over 81. You got 8 over 24, uh, 27. And please simplify. Like, I think probability most of the time they prefer simplify. But then everything here that they write in terms of 81, I think both answers should be fine. But then if possible, simplify. And then the one x is bigger or equal to 3, that means this one is x equals to 3 plus x equals to 4. x equals to 3, you have already, probability is over here, 8 over 81. x equals to 4, you have also, it's 1 over 81. Plus them together is 9 over 81. 
very easy and very sweet. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> are very simple to get this format. This one just to test your knowledge about probability, probability distribution. But it shouldn't be any problem. Hey, you have B, uh, B is, yeah, we, I get B also. Okay, this is A, this is B. It's very messy, but I hope, yeah, you can learn something in this class. Can I simplify into 1 over 9? Oh, yes, please. Simplify into 1 over 9. I, my bad, I didn't see that. You have to simplify. Okay, yeah. 25 questions. Is, this is the Glee Sambian paper 1. I think next Friday we'll discuss about paper 2. I, I guess paper 2 will be a lot harder than paper 1. So, yes. This is paper 1. I hope you do learn something in these 25 questions. And, yeah. I will get some rest. Yeah, I will see you guys next week. And if you have anyone do subscribe about mathematics class, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, and then actually I have next appointment, so I have to leave soon. Thanks, sir. So we need to do paper two, right? Yes, you have to do paper two. Please go to online to search it out, the Green Sabian paper, uh, 2016, try paper two. Or maybe I can share in the group also. All right. If no problem, I will stop the screen recorder now. And then I will see you guys next week.